President Biden working to save his re-election campaign. The president took questions last night at his first solo news conference in eight months. He showed command of foreign policy over nearly an hour, but also stumbled at times. The big question now, will elected Democrats fall in line or ease him out of the race? Chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce starts us off. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, George. Well, the White House this morning is touting a strong performance from the president, but it is not clear if what we saw from him last night is going to be enough to turn the page. He did admit that there are other Democrats who could beat Donald Trump, but said it would be hard to start from scratch. And the president was adamant. Unless his team can show him that he is headed for certain defeat, he's staying in this race. Overnight, despite a rising wave of opposition, President Biden making clear his mind is made up, convinced that he remains the best candidate to defeat Donald Trump. I think I'm the most qualified person to run for president. I beat him once. And I will beat him again. During an hour-long press conference, Biden taking questions from nine reporters, hoping to demonstrate he has the mental fitness and stamina to stay in this race and lead for four more years. I'm not in this for my legacy. I'm in this to complete the job I started. But out of the gate, Biden mixing up his own vice president and his rival. Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president. That I think she's not qualified to be president. Trump seizing on that moment, writing, great job, Joe. But Biden firing back, yes, I know the difference. One's a prosecutor and the other's a felon. <laughs> Hours earlier, a similar mistake. Biden introducing Ukrainian President Zelensky as Russia's Vladimir Putin. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> President Putin. He's going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin. Pressed on that error, the president laughing it off. You mixed up uh, Presidents uh, Zelensky and Putin earlier today. Um, <laughs> Dismissing the moment and calling the NATO summit a success. But even as he pushed back against concerns about his age, the 81-year-old admitting. I just got to just pace myself a little more. Pace myself. In the next debate, I'm not going to be traveling in just 15 time zones a week before. <laughs> but the president was defiant, dismissing the growing chorus of Democrats calling for him to exit the race. I served in the Senate a long time. The idea that senators and congressmen <clears throat> running for office worry about the ticket is not unusual. So there's a long way to go in this campaign. And so... I, uh, I'm just going to keep moving, keep moving, and because, look, i got more work to do. We've got more work to finish. And while he said he has full confidence in his vice president Kamala Harris's ability to be president... From the very beginning, I made no bones about that. She is qualified to be president. That's why I picked her. He made clear he would only reconsider his decision to stay in the race if polls show he has no path to victory. No, unless they came back and said... There's no way you can win. Me. No one's saying that. No poll says that. The president telling his doubters he's not finished yet. Am I getting the job done? Can you name me somebody who's gotten more major piece of legislation passed in three and a half years? I got created 2,000 jobs just last week. So if I slow down, I can't get the job done. That's a sign that I shouldn't be doing it. But there's no indication of that yet. None. Now, despite what they feel was a strong night for the president, the campaign tells me they are braced for even more Democrats to come out and call for him to exit the race. But they insist they can turn this around if they just stay the course, if they keep getting the president out there in front of voters and the American people. And that he is going to be doing that again today. He'll be in the key state of Michigan with a big rally in Detroit where the president is hoping he can turn the spotlight back on Trump and his agenda, George. Okay, Mary, thanks for being our Chief Washington Correspondent John Carl, our Senior Congressional Correspondent, Rachel Scott, Rachel, congressional Democrats, really the target audience of last night. What happened right after? Yeah, and you know, I talked to a number of Democrats after this press conference, and one Democrat had put it to me this way, that this puts them in a more complicated, perhaps even worst case scenario, because what the president did during that press conference was enough to ease concerns, but it was not enough to erase them. There were certainly Democrats that felt like the president looked confident and in command on the world stage, strong on issues of foreign policy and national security, but there were other Democrats that just flat out admitted that there's not a single press conference, television interview, campaign rally that would really do enough 
enough to undo the damage that the president did during that debate performance and that there's a growing sense here on Capitol Hill that the president is running out of time to turn this around. We know that a handful of Democrats had statements already pre-written calling on the president to step aside before he even stepped on the stage at that press conference. They did not release them earlier out of respect for the president being at the NATO summit on the world stage. But within minutes of it ending, we saw three additional House Democrats come out, call on the president to step aside, including the top Democrat in the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Jim Hines. That brings the total number up to 17 Democrats calling on the president to withdraw from the race, George. And, and John, this seems to have turned into a game of beat the clock. Effectively, the president has, what, a week to 10 days after that? He's either in or out. Uh, yeah, or the convention is in is in August. Uh, but but look, George, nothing changed after that press conference. On one hand, Biden did exactly what his doubters asked him to do: come out, uh, take uh, you know an unscripted moment. It was about an hour long. Questions from all comers. Uh, the most significant exchange, though, George, came at the very end when he was asked if he would step down if he could be shown that Kamala Harris would have a better chance of beating Trump, and he said no. But then he added unless he was shown that there was no way he could win. So the bar has shifted now for, uh, for Joe Biden. He told you in your interview that it would take the Lord Almighty uh, uh, to tell him he couldn't, he couldn't win. Now he's suggesting polls could do the same trick. And the bottom line is Democrats, many, many more Democrats than you're hearing publicly, but a lot publicly as well, think there is no way that he can beat. Donald and John, Trump. yeah, Democrats across the country are commissioning those new polls as well. We're going to see yeah. more coming out of the battleground states. And I think one of the important facts to remember is that, you know, last time around, uh, Joe Biden won by, what, four and a half points. And it was still yeah. a very, very close election. Yeah, look, uh, the, the, some of Biden's uh, supporters will point to the national polls, which do show the race essentially tied, certainly within the margin of error. But that doesn't matter. I mean, he... Uh, lost the popular vote in 2016 when he won the presidency, Donald Trump. Uh, so he needs to do more than be tied on national polls. And the bottom line is consistently now, for some nine months, polls in those key battleground states have shown that Donald Trump has the edge in almost all of them, almost all of the polls. Uh, so cert clearly lots of evidence that he is heading in the wrong direction in his race against Donald Trump. John Carl H. Scott, thanks very much. Michael? All right, George. Thank you.